I'm Kurt Polzen. I am the chief engineer for the Space Nuclear Propulsion Project. I work at the NASA Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. My role is to oversee the development of nuclear thermal and nuclear electric propulsion concepts for the agency. Electric propulsion is uh, a means of propelling a spacecraft where you use electricity as the power source. The power then is put into the propellant and you can do that a couple different ways. One is you can use that energy to heat the gas. Those are called electrothermal thrusters. That's the least efficient way to use my electricity. The other is to take my gas and use a little bit of that electricity to ionize it. So I form a plasma. And from there, I can apply electric and magnetic fields to directly accelerate the atom to generate thrust. Those are your general plasma thrusters. It is lower thrust. That's kind of the trade-off. Over time, thousands of hours of operation, that doesn't matter and I can do some really great missions with it. But I do have to take that into account when I'm planning my mission. Especially when you start talking about doing uh, missions that involve people. Because now, I have a constraint where I might want to get there at a certain amount of time. And that does prove to be a challenge for plasma thrusters. The electric propulsion system needs power. Uh, most of everything that's flown now is solar. Uh, but if you want to go further out, or if you want to do human missions, say, to Mars, which is what we're working on now, uh, you need lots of power in space, and that pushes you away from solar into nuclear. The kind that, that we're really focused on at the agency now, uh, which is fission-based. This is taking uranium, like you have in a nuclear power plant on the ground, and you fission it to create a bunch of fission fragments, but also release a certain amount of power, of, of energy per fission event. Much more power dense than radioisotope. More controllable, because I can adjust how many fissions are occurring at any one time. And then I take that energy, which is thermal, and I can convert it to power, just like I do on the Earth. We're talking about something for space nuclear propulsion right now that's megawatts. The reactor itself for a couple megawatts of electric power is only about the size of a large trash can. I mean, it's not very big because you've got so much energy stored in those atoms that can fission. Up until recently, those reactors have been built using what's called HEU, or highly enriched uranium. So it's the same type that you would find in nuclear warheads. And that's not good. Right, because if that goes missing, you've got big problems with proliferation. Regulatory environments, especially when it comes to nuclear, have kept people out of the game. Recently, there's been a big push to try things with something called LEU, or low enriched uranium, below 20% enrichment. The proliferation risk is not nearly as big. If I go to lower enrichment, more organizations have that license. The barrier to getting that license is a lot lower so the cost is a lot lower. It allows me to engage a lot more of the nation's industrial base, intellectual base, and this is where there's been a big growth because nuclear is so clean and so self-contained and so self-sufficient and it runs for such a long period of time. That's all been kind of enabled by going to this low enriched uranium. I've got multiple ideas now starting to be brought to the forefront they're different, and I like that because not any one person has all of the answers. So you're really looking for this period of growth and invention and discovery to really see which ideas are the best, which ones percolate to the top. And I think that's great, right? Because we're gonna benefit from that.